Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Box Office Talk. This is the show where I break down what happened at the box office, see if my predictions for the top five are correct, then make predictions for next week's top five. So let's get right on into it. Last week I predicted the number one would be Wonka, number two would be Christmas with The Chosen, number three would be The Boy and the Heron, number four would be The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, and number five would be Godzilla Minus One. And I got two out of five of my predictions right for this weekend. Um, sorry again. Um, that uh, this video is a little later than normal. Even the one that I delayed, like, uh, what was it, like a couple weekends ago now, um, even that was a little bit more early than this one. I do apologize for that. Uh, just some, n nothing, nothing serious. Just, you know, some hectic things going on at home, so it's kind of hard to, like, mm, get in here and do the video without potentially getting distracted or having, you know, audio <laughs> complications. So uh, just th that might also happen um, maybe next week since uh, box office talk falls on a Sunday, which is Christmas Eve. So, y y you know, it could happen again. So just fair warning, that's just the season for it. But let's go over what happened in the overall top 10, though. A lot of us, uh, pretty much all of us actually uh, got it wrong. <laughs> you know, some of us got close, but then Christmas with the Chosen, uh, which I thought was going to do pretty well because it seemed like the chosen other the the other fathom event for the chosen did pretty well and it stuck around in the top five for a little bit but not the case this time around so I don't, I don't know if it's a thing of like it's not close enough or or uh, people don't know about this one being in theaters or people already saw the chosen the last time and they don't care anymore <laughs> but let's go over what happened number one was of course Wonka did top the box office this weekend and my thing of the, the last weekend I think I started to talk about it a little bit I think this will be your your puss in boots or the greatest showman of this year I, I'm not gonna go as far as to say like it'll crack a billion like a 2018 Aquaman or Avatar, you know, because those are those are completely different. But I do think this one will probably catch on because the the cinema scores at an A minus, you know, it uh, um, outdid some estimates from the worldwide numbers last weekend, and you know, it, it's kind of you know kind of gotten on point or a little bit higher than the U.S. ones as well. Um, so I think this one will have the potential to stick around, you know, a lot longer and, and with a lot higher numbers. So I think this will be our surprise holiday hit. Um, let's go over <laughs> what actually, what it actually made. It made 39 million this weekend. This is of course on a budget of 125 million. Um, as far as the original film, it, you know, it, it bear, it only made like 4 million as far as its entire domestic and worldwide run so it's kind of hard to like compare <laughs> as far as like you know uh how did it do compared to the original it pretty much already kind of topped that one but as far as the tim burton johnny depp film the opening was 17 million below that one i do think there may be a chance this one has a stronger word of mouth and a stronger staying power to get over that at some point though um so it is 167 million behind that film though However, a little bit more exciting for Paul King, um, his previous two films being the Paddington movies. Domestically, this weekend is 21 million over the first one and 28 million over Paddington 2. It only needs 1 million until it outgrosses Paddington 2 uh, right now, and then it'll be on the fast track to outgross the first Paddington, and then it'll be Paul King's highest grossing film uh, for the domestic numbers, which is pretty fantastic. And then jumping into the worldwide numbers, I kind of already talked about last weekend, it outdid itself. Um, and now this adds to a worldwide total of 152 million. So, you know, not, not only are we kind of banking on a word of mouth staying power that is going to happen with this film, it's going to carry those domestic numbers, but worldwide, it is already a couple million over the $125 million initial production budget. They're clearly on they only need exactly 98 million uh to double this budget and then they're in the clear which they're definitely going to make in, in a little bit more so this movie is doing very very well and of course <laughs> because it's doing well and people are kind of celebrating that are, and kind of excited to talk about that some people <laughs> the thing that i was previously talking about in other videos bringing up the marvels again oh the marvels had a, a slightly higher u.s uh opening weekend uh but uh that's a flop but Wonka is the hit and it's like wow just taking <laughs> just 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 taking both movies out of their their budget context <laughs> and and just the the long history of the MCU box office successes <laughs> like okay that that's great you know it's it's not even worth going into a big argument over because it's like 
like it's so obviously stupid it's like are they do they do they know they're actually trolling or are they actually that stupid you know what i mean Jesus Christ. <laughs> but it needs 323 million until it outgrosses the Johnny Depp Wonka movie. And then for Paul King, it needs 40 million until it outgrosses Paddington 2. And then it's, you know, on its way to do Paddington. So I think this will have the chance to, I don't think it will be number one again. I think Aquaman will come in and it will get its, its audience. It'll get a, you know, decent amount of money. But as far as staying power, I'm not sure if Aquaman has the same kind of appeal that the 2018 film kind of had back in the day so i think we might be looking at down the line you know aquaman becomes number one but then it has maybe a significant drop off and then wonka is the movie that kind of takes its place which i think could be interesting you know it could be interesting to see happen that's that's kind of my you know my prediction <laughs> for just the 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 long, the long game for Wonka. So we'll see how that goes. Number two was The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. This movie's still holding on pretty well, even though it's still, it's in the single digit millions now, uh, making 5.8 million, adding to a domestic total of 145 million. So it's still behind mocking J Part 2 by 136 million, but worldwide it is sitting at 291 million, 9 million from tripling its uh estimated a hundred million dollar budget now that of course ranges from like a hundred million to 130 million so if if you're if you want to stick with the 130 million in your head it still has a ways to go until it triples it but a lot of people have been kind of like sticking with the 100 million kind of budget so it might have been a little lower so yeah, either way this movie has been very successful and it's definitely been living up to what i have been saying it is which is the bumblebee <laughs> Uh, of 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 the Hunger Games franchise worldwide, though it still needs 355 million until it outgrosses Mocking J Part Two. Not that that even matters, because like I said, it's still successful. Number three was The Boy in the Heron, making 5.5 million, adding to a domestic total of 23 million. It is outgrossed Ponyo by 8 million, and it is now officially the highest-grossing Hayao Miyazaki film domestically of all time, which is kind of crazy. And then, like I was kind of saying last weekend, worldwide, it still has a lot, <laughs> a lot more movies to outgross. Now it's sitting at a hundred million worldwide and it's still behind the wind rises by 17 million. So worldwide, it still needs, needs a lot of time to outgrow some of these other movies, but domestically, you know, this, this must feel pretty good for Hayao Miyazaki and, and fans of his, you know, seeing this movie and, and appreciating the fact that a lot of other people are now sharing in the celebration of, of his art being scene you know it's it's just really cool you know and i i didn't really expect it i thought for sure like you know hayao miyazaki's pretty he's been pretty popular i but i had no idea until looking at these stats that you know th this would outgrow so many of them so fast number four is godzilla minus one making 5.04 million adding to a domestic total of 34 million worldwide it is sitting at 57 million so if we were sticking with that 15 million dollar budget it is uh tripled it and it's three million away from quadrupling it which is fantastic but as the director has kind of recently stated i wish it was 15 million so it's a little lower maybe it already has quadrupled it which you know good but Man, I hope those <laughs> I hope those VFX artists didn't get treated too terribly as we as more people kind of discuss the uh, the uh, uh, the wage issues <laughs> regarding that. Number five is Trolls Band Together, making 3.9 million, adding to a domestic total of 88 million. It is still behind the original by 65 million worldwide. It is sitting at 183 million, and it's behind the original by 160 million. But we are at least <laughs> uh, seven million away from actually double doubling its $95 million budget, which, yeah, surprisingly, it has not done that yet. It's only crossed over that initial point, um, which isn't terrible, I guess. Like, they're about to do it, and because, you know, Christmas is right around, I think they kind of got caught up at just the right time to just barely squeak by, but that's got to feel a little bad that Trolls started off so promising of a new franchise for DreamWorks, and it's kind of like, Actually, yeah, it's it's just kind of fine, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, uh, it, it's kind of it's it's not one of those things where it is puss in like puss in boots came out like a couple days before Christmas, you know, it didn't open with the best numbers, but it actually did catch hold of that 
of that holiday season hold, and this one has been out for a little while, so I don't think, like, Migration would have a better chance at this point, but I think Migration's gonna take a, uh, a backseat to Wonka. I think, like I said, I think Wonka is the one to really do it this year, but we'll see. We'll see how it all goes. Number six is Wish, and for sure this movie will not <laughs> get any more traction. Um, it made $3.1 million, adding to a domestic total of $54 million. So it outgrossed Ryan the Last Dragon domestically by a couple hundred thousand. It is $6 million behind Fantasia. Worldwide, it is sitting at $126 million, so it outgrossed Raya by $10 million. It now needs $43 million until they outgross Emperor's New Groove, which... Once again, just p pity accomplishments of <laughs> outgrossing the, the, the lower grossing Disney animation films. And now it's behind Emperor's New Groove, even though it's been out for like about a month now. It's it's behind Emperor's New Groove. <laughs> I, I don't know what else I could possibly add to this. So let's move on to number seven, which was Christmas with the Chosen Holy Night, which I, once again, I thought it would open much higher and it didn't, which okay, you know what I mean? More people got to see Hunger Games again, or, or, or more people were spread the word about Boy and the Heron, so that's 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 better, you know? But it made $2.9 million, adding to a domestic total of $4.6 million. I'm not sure what the budget of this is, since it's just a collection of TV episodes, if I'm, if I'm right, or it's just one season finale. Who fucking knows? I'm not looking into it. Um, but I'm assuming it's a little lower than your average film, because, you know, TV... I know it's I, I know I know it's well produced, you know, it's got great production value, blah blah blah. Um but yeah, maybe this is fine for them. <laughs> Let's move right along to number eight, which is Napoleon making two point two million, adding to a domestic total of fifty seven million. Uh, domestically, it is still behind Alien by $5 million, but worldwide, since it's sitting at 188 it has outgrossed Alien by $4 million, so it needs $30 million until it outgrosses Kingdom of Heaven now for Ridley Scott. So still trucking along, it's $12 million away from actually hitting its uh, uh, $200 million initial production budget, or the uh, higher form of its initial pr production budget because it's it's always ranged from 130 to 200 mil so uh wherever it falls <laughs> either way it hasn't doubled any of these numbers but like i've also said doesn't matter you know because of the streaming angle number nine is renaissance a film by beyonce making 1.9 million adding to a domestic total of 30 million dollars it is still two million away from kevin hart's let me explain stand-up concert film uh worldwide it is sitting at 36 million so it's outgrossed the richard pryor one by two million it now sits behind the original kings of comedy by two million so still inching along you know what i mean so it's it's about to leave the top 10 for short we got a lot of you know new releases coming one of them is at number 10 it's gonna go in in a couple more theaters next week it's been in limited for a bit um but that number 10 being poor things making 1.2 million adding to a domestic total already of 2.2 million like i said uh limited release and it, this is on a budget of $35 million, and I'm wondering, I, I think for sure it has people's interest. I think for sure people will see it next weekend when it um, expands. I'm certainly seeing it. You know, I'm really excited for the New York Oslanthemus film. But I do wonder how many more people will, and I know Emma Stone... I mean, so many aspects of the movie are being praised, but also Emma Stone's performance has been highlighted, and people may be curious about that. I'm wondering... I'm wondering <laughs> how much this will catch on, though. It would be really exciting if it, you know, caught on like wildfire, you know, especially for award season, but we'll see. But let's get into now the predictions for next week's top five, because like I was saying earlier, I think number one will be Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. I do think, though, that number two will be Wonka really close behind. I think Aquaman will take number one just because, you know, superhero movies take number one at the box office, you know, and there is still a fandom for you know, this version of Aquaman, and, you know, technically this is the last film in this continuity of DC before the big reboot by uh, James Gunn and, and Peter Safran, so I think, you know, people will show up for this, but number two, I think, will be Wonka pretty close behind, and then number three, I think, will be Migration, just because it's a new family film, it's Illumination, could be cute for the holidays, I think it'll do okay, and then number four, th these last two could get tricky, because there's so many movies coming out that, you know, it's not like they're all unlimited, but they, they don't have as big of a push as the top three that I just mentioned. So I think number four will be anyone but you, just based off of it's a rom-com. You know, you, you people want to have fun for the holidays. Uh, and also, maybe there was some, some kind of buzz with Glenn Powell and Sidney Sweeney before. Maybe that'll push them over. And then number five, just based off how it did this weekend, 
you know, entering the top 10 with, with such a limited release, I think number five could be poor things. But really, this could, this could, this could go either way. We got the Iron Claw coming out as well. Will people be more interested in that than poor things or anyone but you? Who fucking knows? <laughs> but yeah, those are my predictions for next week's top five. What are yours? Leave them in the comments down below. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe. I'm Jackson Fulcher. See you guys next time.